Republican Congressman Andy Ogles of Tennessee, whose district includes the Covenant School, responded to questions on whether the House would act to put forward solutions on school shootings. Look at this. We don't want to jump to any conclusions. Uh, there's still a lot more information uh, about this case that hasn't been let out to the public. And I think ultimately, I think what this does is highlight uh, some of the mental health issues, the mental health crisis we have in this country. That needs to be the real conversation that we're having right now. Uh, how did this individual slip through the cracks? What could have been done to get them help? You know, by the way, that, 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 that's the guy who, was he not the guy who yes. had Christmas gonna card? Two years ago, he and his family posed for their Christmas card, all carrying weapons. He was also asked in that same interview if he regretted it, and he said, of course not. That's my right. I didn't right. get that. I didn't my get right that card. Yeah, you didn't get that. I didn't get it. And here, I, I, I didn't quote. get he was, one. He was asked about that card. He said, yep. quote, why would I regret a photograph of my family exercising my rights to bear arms? That was his response, yes. Shooting and happened it, in his district. Yeah, it happened in his district, the glorification of weapons of war. Uh, and, and by the way, so perverse, I just got to say, so perverse to do that, celebrating the birth of what traditional Christians, not Christian nationalists, but traditional Christians, called the Prince of Peace. Uh, the, the Savior who said, blessed are the peacemakers. Um, and can go on and on, but this, this hopelessness. And Kevin McCarthy, he just, look at this guy. I mean, this, he's afraid of his own shadow. Children are being slaughtered in classrooms, and Kevin McCarthy is afraid to say anything about it? What happened in Nashville is obviously an incredibly serious situation. Do you not think it would require a response from the Speaker of the House? Do you think you'll speak about that this week? Why? Why? I, Why don't I, you I say something? Wow. Why? That, that's just well, there, the lack of humanity. Even a is coward staggering. could say that's a terrible thing that happened in that school. My thoughts and prayers go out to family. Or I'll give another avenue: the heroism of the police officers. Yeah. Thank God for those officers. We mourn the loss of those six people, including three nine-year-olds. And nothing the on social media. The cops stopped worse. Perhaps. But he has said nothing. nothing. He has put out nothing. But when you nothing. are put in power by Marjorie Taylor Greene, and you say you'll do anything to protect her and others from the most extreme uh, edges of, of the Republican Party, of American politics, you're afraid of your own shadow. He's afraid of his own shadow. And again, the impotence, the weakness, the cowardice, it's just crazy. And the first guy we had up, Mr. We Can't Do Anything, they're you're elected. They're aggressively going after drag queen shows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they are aggressively going after all of these phony issues, like calling things that aren't CRT, CRT, that's freaking librarians out and teachers out because they don't want to get fired. They can't afford to be fired. So they're pulling Roberto Clemente books from the shelf and Hank Aaron books from the shelf. They'll go after that because they see that as a great threat to children. But as John Hyland asked, what's the body count? for uh, so-called wokeness, which, by the way, a word that's used so much, it literally means nothing anymore. I used to read stories on wokeness all the time because it was an issue that fascinated me. But if everything's woke, then nothing is woke. But they declare these phony wars and yet won't confront the enemy that's standing right in front of their children with a gun. You know, I think the silence and the dithering is, it's morally abhorrent, but I actually think the impotence is the point. Um, they're not failing to execute their politics. That is their politics. Being and it actually impotent? Been, yes. And here's why. They fail to do anything to prevent this predictable, foreseeable set of gun catastrophes. The catastrophes happen predictably, foreseeably. By the way, by the way they're going... Another one's going to happen, and another one's yes. going to happen, and another one's going to happen. And then what happens? Think what happens this each time. time. tomorrow. Impotence. More people, as you were saying earlier on the broadcast, more people go buy guns. Yeah. More people then acquire the kind of ideology of wanting to protect their guns. Um, and then more people see big problems in their lives that government can't solve and get demoralized about government, which helps this extremist right ideology. And it is sickening to watch them try to claim the idea of freedom. I, for me, the freedom to remain alive or have my kids remain alive kind of comes first. Yeah, but, those little kids but, 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 but also, though, they say free, they talk about a freedom 
They talk about a freedom that they've made up in their own twisted Correct. heads because they've been they've been whipped into a paranoid frenzy by the NRA for 25 years from jackbooted thugs when Bush 41 quit all the way through where, you know, now they're claiming the Second Amendment protects things it just doesn't protect. They should read Scalia's own words in Heller. It just doesn't protect the right to carry around weapons of war. And their position, let's be clear, the Republican Party today is waging a war on cops, right? Those cops that you saw in that incredible body cam footage, those cops would probably love to be running in on a knife, a knife incident. Even a handgun. Yeah. I don't think those cops and their spouses love to be running in on someone with seven weapons of war. So why don't Republicans respect the lives of police officers? Of anybody. But I, I can say one more thing briefly. It is important that the opposition to this, Democrats and others who are against children dying in their own schools, having one-way tickets to schools in the morning, um, actually show the kind of action that the representatives you were talking about refuse to show. If you don't create a contrast, then you continue to fuel the sense of demoralization that people have, that nothing can be done, nothing's going to be done. We, we should see action. We should see whatever executive things you can do, sweep into action. Go down there. You know, it, sometimes there's a kind of passive, wonky discussion on the well-meaning side of this issue. We need dr a dramatic flurry of action to show people that there is a one side that thinks we can do nothing, I can do nothing, and another side that can do things to solve this. It's Mark, there, that argument from the one congressman from East Tennessee that we heard there, effectively saying, look, this is the price of freedom. If you want a free society, some nine-year-olds are going to get slaughtered in their little Presbyterian school, or some college kids in the dining hall are going to get shot in East Lansing, Michigan. The list goes on and on and on. What's a better way? You've been writing about this for a long time. Obviously, there's a better way than that, but a better way of stopping what we're seeing almost every day in this country now. Willie, really great question, and, and, and it, it's a really easy answer, and it has to do with, with talking to police officers. You know, I, I've come on this show many times as I go around the country, to, you know, teaching leadership to, to, to cops, and I got a call last night from a friend of mine. He's a, he's a senior official at an East Coast uh, or, or a big city uh, uh, police department uh, in, in the Northeast, um, and he said that there is no cop that he talks to who believes that an individual should have uh, an AR-15. There is no cop that he talks to that are against red flag laws. There's no cop that he talks to that thinks background checks uh, are, are an infringement. So talk to cops, talk to big city police departments who are actually allies, and they would, there would be allies of the Democratic Party on this. Um, and they absolutely are not uh, in, in any way supportive of this kind of hyper individualism that allows for, you know, almost Wild West mentality. So there's a way to do this. And I think my, my argument, again, what, what, I, what I mentioned before is the Democrats can't stay silent. You know, you, you don't take a knee. The Republicans certainly are, but Democrats should step up. This is a plague, an epidemic that is that is hurting our country. And for God's sake, you know, this is the time to lead now. That would be my absolute plea. And police officers are a natural ally. Well, right. Mark Paulo Maropoulos, thank you very much. It is, it's, it's interesting that the Republicans won't even stand up for their cops when you think about well, it this and, way. And, and, and cops are, again, they're, they're, they're terrified uh, in, in, uh, in most We've seen jurisdictions it. having to deal with this. And we saw it, we saw it at Uvalde. We saw it's, it's complete opposite here. But, Anna, talk really quickly, if you will, about community, sense of community, civic pride, uh, going back to what John Kennedy said, we used to believe that with our rights came responsibilities. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. We all have a stake in this republic. And yes, you were given rights. But with those rights come responsibilities. As Mark said, over the last 20 years, there's been this hyper individualism where people say, I, I want these rights, I have these rights, and they declare rights that don't even exist in the Constitution of the United States. But they will say, as we heard these politicians say, well, you know what, let's not do anything about the little nine-year-old girls getting slaughtered. Let's not do anything about the principals getting slaughtered. I'm not looking at that, but let's talk about these, these constitutional rights that I really don't have, but I'm claiming. 
how do we rebalance our rights and our responsibilities and create a more civil society like this country had for 200 years? It's such a great question. And, you know, I think in many ways we have allowed that kind of hyper-individualism, that hyper-individualistic idea of rights that Mark was talking about. We've allowed the extremist right to claim that they are the monopolists in understanding what rights are and what freedom is. And I think it's really important for those of us who have a different understanding of freedom or more expansive understanding of freedom to kind of win that argument. I don't think we've actually won that argument. I think the, the NRA view, the kind of notion that that is freedom and what we're asking for is something else. Somehow little kids because going to school when is not freedom. Says, that, that's our failure also. We need to win that argument. And we are says, winning that argument. You're taking away my Second Amendment rights. Too often, that's met with silence instead of somebody saying, I've already sworn once on this show. So... Mm-hmm. Don't do I it. I better not do it again. The, somebody come back up. Well, that is just rank horse crap. Yep. You don't have that Second Amendment right. And this is what Scalia said. This is what Connecticut's done. This is what New York's done. This is what California's done. And all of these laws have been upheld. Yeah. The Supreme Court has allowed them to stay in place. So you're lying. You don't have that right. But my child has a right Correct. to go to school and be safe from weapons of war. And